Hi, I'm Josh Haftel, and I'm super excited this week to sit down with Gareth Pond. He's got a ridiculous number of Instagram followers, and for good reason. We'll take a look at his current work, and the former videographer will show us how he adds motion to stills to create cinemagraphs. Right now, on Make It. How are you doing? Good, how are you, Josh? I'm super. Tell us about your photography. I, I know that you've got a wide range of different stuff that you do. I've got an interesting take on photography. I think like, I always try and mix things up as much as I can. Travel photography, portraiture, I've been mixing in a lot of cinemagraphs. I used to only do film, right. like only, only shot video. Got a degree in film and TV. Long story short, like Instagram came about and I was like, hey, I should start using Instagram. Um, and I started doing photography actually to complement my composition. So I started doing more stills. I started getting into that whole process of trying to figure out like what a good photo meant. What would you find when you were going from the video world into the still world? What were those yeah. big differences? With film, you're always trying to tell the before and after of a moment. With stills, you're always trying to define that one moment that tells the before and after. Right. Films are about life. Right. And if you can grasp that element, telling the story becomes very easily. Right. Basically, you're saying that creating these videos or having this, this ability to do these, these films mm. meant that focusing on that storytelling. So yeah. how did that translate to you into like the still life? How did you compress all that together? Sure. Um, well, for me, it, it was really about like going back to the innocence of a moment. Mm -hmm. When you're young, when you're a kid, you're not aware of life. You're not aware of things that are going on around you. There's certain moments where everything around you just disappears and it just creates something beautiful. In many ways, like that really boils down to finding the emotion in a moment, right? right. I was in Nigeria um, earlier last year and they've got this, this really long bridge, it's the longest bridge in Africa. And I'm, I managed to get underneath this bridge and I was like, this is a really great photo. The perspective's crazy, mm. it's insane. There's like a beautiful reflection but I need something here to be able to evoke emotion in this image. What is my entry point in an image to be able to allow an audience to relate to that? And out of the corner of my eye, I saw a couple of kids, like they run across perfectly in the middle of this perspective, like yeah. running through. And I, I took the photo and it's my favorite photo that I've taken to date. So wow. it's awesome. What's like the one emotion that you want to like instill into your photos? For me, it's like innocence. Like it's, if I can help somebody just go back to, to something innocent and nostalgic, like mm -hmm. that's really what I try to do. How did you get into doing cinemagraphs and, yeah. and what's the process that you've gone through? Over the last couple of years, I've been focusing a lot more on photography just because it's quicker, it's easier. And adding the motion to, to stills is really a subtle return to film, being able to take that element of motion or that element of like special effects and convey meaning out of it. So it's, for me, like moving into cinematographs is that it's missing film, but also being able to add an element of that into the stills mm -hmm. to be able to tell a bit of a bigger story, combining like images of edited in Lightroom and then like doing stuff in After Effects, combining that all. Mm -hmm. and then throwing in my own sort of animation styles that, that make it an interesting piece to cool. look at. And there's something interesting about cinemagraphs because they are still pretty new. I look at a lot of the stuff, I'm like, geez, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it seems really hard, but um, I think it'd be, you said that you would be happy to share with us yeah. like, one of your approaches, so Absolutely. I would love to take a look at that. Why don't you show us a couple of these cinemagraphs that you've been making? This one here. Yeah, this one's cool. I like this one a lot. Is a combination of just stills and then it's animated in After Effects. So right. this original piece um, by Takashi Murakami actually doesn't move. Right. It's, it's at the Museum of Contemporary Art. But it would be Chicago. pretty cool if it did move it, like it that. It would, right? <laughs> um, so I managed to get a portrait of him mm. um, and then split up various images, mm. pulled them into After Effects and put this together. That's awesome. Yeah. I can actually show you how I did this one. Yes, please. Um, I've got That'd all the awesome. files laid cool. out. Let's try it. And so I started off like bringing in all the like those images to Lightroom. I selected these two. So okay. that was the, the portrait of him, obviously. And then this is the piece. Mm -hmm. So that's it without animation and all the fanciness. Still amazing. Pulled out all um, the adjustments. I wanted to get the detail out. So mm -hmm. 
played with the sliders here and got a, an image that I was happy with. Mm -hmm. um, did the best I could with this too to try and match the lighting. Mm -hmm. And then exported those and pulled them into Photoshop. Okay. Then what I did here is, as you can see, I just duplicated that background. Right. So I um, actually cut out just the, the detailing of the art, multiplied it, um, pulled it into a much bigger canvas, as mm -hmm. you can see. Uh, and then actually just pulled that image into After Effects. I have the background. Mm -hmm. I have that, big file. that image. Um, and then I have the portrait of Murakami. And then I put all, pulled all of those pieces into a project folder mm -hmm. onto a sequence. Um, at the moment, what I did is have that background, that base. Mm -hmm. So the base is like the, the static part of it. The background exactly. is that large, wide thing that you made. Yeah, exactly. Right. So if, if you see, I can hide that. Right. Pull those two in first. Mm -hmm. And if I hide that piece, um, I basically masked out that section, mm -hmm. right. which made it obviously disappear. And then I brought in a reflection because... Mm -hmm. You want to keep it so that it feels connected to each other, so it's moving. Exactly, yeah. Um, and then I brought in the shadow. Okay. So what I did there is I actually duplicated the base layer right. and masked out yeah. additional pieces, you know, so it, it wouldn't like, the reflection would look like it's actually reflecting properly. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the reflection is actually a duplicate of the background, mm -hmm. which is then masked out too. And then I brought in our amazing artist, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, painted in a bit of shadows to try and match the lighting, mm -hmm. put in a bit of like a drop shadow on there too, and then also added a reflection on him. Mm -hmm. And then I brought in a adjustment layer to sort of just brighten up, up the whole layer. Yeah. Right. Um, and then what I did is I animated the background, so it, it's going to lag a bit because it takes a bit of time yeah. to render. But and so yeah. everything's built up inside of After Effects. Exactly. And yeah. then you're adding this like motion blur to it through the animation. totally. Yeah. Turn it into a layer, adding motion blur. Yeah, it's really and cool. And you can see all the position keyframes there. Mm -hmm. So that's giving you like the acceleration and then stopping exactly. and slowing it down and keeping it like not just be like one like. Carousel yeah. going around. Exactly. It's something interesting. I don't want it to be just a, a standard like movement because then it becomes boring. Right. Like right. Um, and this, that's the result. Yeah. It's so cool. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And and did you do this? Like, what did you end up with this uh, just on your Instagram feed, or did you yeah. actually use it for something else? Um, so I've got a really good relationship with the uh, Museum of of Contemporary Art in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I put, put that out. I was like, really rad seeing the Murakami exhibition. Mm -hmm. Did he see this yet? I think he has, yeah. Um, they definitely sent it to him. Yeah. So I don't know if maybe he'll repost it one day. <laughs> one day. And I'll get famous too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. I think there was one last thing, though, that you wanted to share. Oh, like, yeah. You told me about <laughs> this thing that you, you do, and I think it's really fun, kind of like a little scavenger hunt in your photos. Yeah. So what is that? Um, probably about two, three years ago, I we went out on a, a photo walk out in the city. Um, usually we'd grab dinner after that. So we sat down, a bunch of my friends, all of us were browsing our Instagrams um, after editing a bit of photos. And I just like sat back for a few seconds and everyone was just like, scroll, double tap, scroll, double tap. And I was like, they're not even looking at for mm. even a second, right? right? So I was like, how can I combat that um, and make it a bit more interesting to like view imagery mm -hmm. on Instagram? And what I started doing is I, I had a little rocket mm -hmm. in all my photos. Mm -hmm. Is a hashtag spot the GP rocket. And if you if you spot it, it's actually here. Right. So it's a little zoom it's, into it a little bit for us, just so yeah. like, like maybe how do, how do I do maybe that? those there folks that are watching this on their little <laughs> phone devices might not actually see it. Okay, so there it goes. Okay, <laughs> I get it. Now. It's but nice and pixelated, it. but you get the idea. It's <laughs> yeah. like over there. <laughs> so yeah, that was my way to just sort of help people pause for a bit. Right. Um, so what does somebody get when they spot the GP rocket? People just get excited. Get excited. <laughs> you get excited, and you get excited, exactly. and you get excited, and everybody gets excited. <laughs> I've had some random DMs where they're like, hey, just so you know, I spent the last three hours trying to find all the rockets in your photo. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you so much for playing. That's a lot. That's hilarious. And are there like some photos where you're just like messing with people? Like, there's no rocket in this one. <laughs> I've done it once where I uploaded a photo, and I forgot to add it. 
And then I actually went back and deleted it because I felt so bad. Oh, jeez. But if the hashtag is there, spot the GP rocket, it's, it's there. there. Okay, yeah. cool. And what does the rocket signify for you, just so that we know? I believe that everyone should have one ridiculous dream. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my dream is to go to space one day. Um, and? And I really want to go. Okay. So, cool. And that's what it is. It's like more of like a, a reminder to dream. Thank you again, Gareth, for coming by, sharing with us all these wonderful photos. Your cinematographs are amazing. Your approach, your personality. Really enjoyed having you on the show. And thank you, everybody out there, for checking this out. And join us next time on the Make a Photography Show.